Welcome to the Momxiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine. Momxiety is a real thing for every new parent. And when you add in a chronic illness, food allergy, or other challenging circumstances, it can become downright isolating. And that's why the Momxiety Club is here for you. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me and let's get rid of this Momxiety together. Hey there, how are you doing? It is getting to holiday season and that can be rough for a lot of us. It has been an emotional roller coaster of anxiety, panic, and calm for me, uh, dealing with a lot of, you know, everything about COVID uh, with the young kids, especially a young child who is immunocompromised. Thankfully though has his first vaccination, but still I over worry about everything. Uh, And there have been some big ups and downs, you know, all the family drama, family stuff of everything. And that has set me on this I all or nothing path about motherhood. Uh, I, and I, I admit I'm very all or nothing about every single thing. And not that I would be nothing about motherhood, but I guess I only see it as it's all. I'm 100% a stay-at-home mom who only focuses on the kids or I run a business and I don't get to do those things. And that is challenging uh, because when I guess my parenting is questioned, I, and I see what needs to be done for my kids. uh, My oldest definitely has some neurodiversity uh, going on in addition to his VEO IBD. Um, So there has been a lot of learning over the past couple of years with how we handle him, how we handle emotions, how we handle structuring our day, how we handle him eating, making sure he's eating everything. And a lot of people could look at it and say, Tori, you're being overly strict. You're causing anxiety in him, on and on and on. Um, But no, I'm doing what is best for my kids uh, by creating this structure that he thrives in, by creating something that he knows what is coming, he can plan for, he can look forward to, so that it And not just throwing in these surprises where if that doesn't happen, it is really upsetting. And then we are facing the brunt of that then at home. So I have worked a lot. I've just did a whole um, visual schedule. I created a command center recently, uh, which goes up in our kitchen with little... uh, little clipboards and printouts and different stuff, just like with our calendar and chores and tasks and like the one, two, three, four, five of how we get ready for school and what we do when we get home, all those things. And that was helpful, but I still having that visual cue to it, um, with little pictures, with the words, it's, even more. Some people are visual people with, they need to see like it actually happening rather than read it. So I just started that. I'll post a picture of it too on Instagram, but my oldest is loving that. It's helping us make sure, helping me make sure we don't forget anything in the morning or in the evening, uh, with keeping track of medicine and if he's taken it or not. Um, since I'm always, generally the one who does that, if there's days that my husband is home or taking him to school or handling bedtime with the oldest, then, um, 
there's times when that can, that evening pill can be forgotten. Um, so this helps just make sure there's that visual cue for us there. And then we go on. So I know that was kind of like a tangent about everything, but I guess each, each time I feel like I have to tighten down a little bit more on that structure or schedule. I feel like this outside pressure of that's not necessary. Why do we need to do this? Um, and that's not for my husband. That's not, it's just like, I feel like that's how I'm being perceived or seeing things on social media and going, well, these other people don't have to do that. Do I really need to do this? Am I being too rigid? But no, I'm not. I know it helps. It might take me some time to do it, but it helps in the end. So where does that tie in with all, what we were talking about in the beginning with the holidays and hoping you're managing your anxiety um, is that there's just a lot with dealing with that neurodiversity and dealing with the possibilities of having a weakened immune system for one of my kids or both of my kids that we're adding a bunch of people to our circle for Thanksgiving, even though they're, you know, in their circles, it just, it just makes me go to the end. So I don't know. I hope I'm not alone. (laughs) If you think you're alone, don't worry. You're not, but it's really hard at sometimes, sometimes to, you know, take that deep breath and go, it'll be okay. Because what anxiety is always about the future. I'm worried about the future instead of being in the moment. So that's what I'm working on, trying to be in the moment. So with that, what I really wanted to talk about today is one of the posts recently that I put up on Instagram was about doubting myself. And the post in the picture, it said, Today, I want you to think about all that you are instead of all that you are not. And this is a tough one at times because I'm more often than not, you know, like always thinking about what I'm not, not what I am and what I'm providing. And that really goes into that all or nothing mentality where if I can't like have the house perfect and have the schedule perfect and all this other stuff, then I'm not a good mom. And on the opposite, I know I need to work with using my brain and business and helping others. So I know that I'm not going to have that perfect this, 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 and that. So just taking that moment and going, but I am being a great mom for my kids. I am advocating for them. I am keeping them safe. I am helping other people. I am, and so on. I am a good person. I am strong. Um, But you know, that reminds me of something I talked about a little bit before where what we want to teach our kids, what we really should be modeling is, um, how we talk to ourselves because there's all those, those things like you, how you talk to your kids is going to be their inner voice when they're grown ups. And there are times that I think I remember saying to Eli when he was like taking a step up, um, from our driveway to like a landing and it's a really big step and he wasn't, he was still little and he was pulling himself and I was going, great job. You're so strong. Wow. Look at you. Those types of things. And I go, but I'm here telling myself that I'm so weak and I don't have a core anymore. And I need to do my pelvic floor and core. I need to do my sneeze proof your pelvic floor on myself again and all these different things. And it just makes me think like, Why did we stop talking to ourselves that way? We need to talk to ourselves with care and compassion and model that for our kids. You know, as we head into the winter holiday season, for many of us, it is in the colder regions, we're starting to get more stuck inside. So maybe you're 
long walks or, you know, getting sunshine isn't going to be as helpful for you, helpful for you right now to kind of get you out of that stuck place. But what are some other things that you can do now to help ease the anxiety and keep you in the present rather than the worrying about the future? No segue here, but I can't believe Hanukkah starts already in less than a week. It starts on Sunday, Sunday night. So it's very close to Thanksgiving. Uh, so I guess in a good way, we're kind of getting it out of the way early <laughs> and don't have a lot of the weight. And uh, although I'm really trying to pare down on things that are around the house, knowing what the kids will be getting, um, so that is a little anxiety producing as well, but <laughs> all right, well, that's it. I digress. I've gone all over the place today. Basically, I just want to say, think about all that you are instead of all that you are not. And if you are looking for support, for help and reminding yourself of all the great things that you are, the Anxiety Club is a community just like that, where we have bi-weekly support sessions and access to our community online anytime. And you get the added benefit of having workout sessions there that are focused on reducing anxiety, building up your strength in your core and pelvic floor. So you can chase around after your kids or run around after your teenagers and not have to be anxious about having to run to the bathroom or leaking or anything like that. So just offering again, the Anxiety Club is here for you. And also, since it's the holiday season, a special offer until the end of 2021, um, you can gift yourself a gift of a great pelvic floor in the Sneeze Proof Your Pelvic Floor course, which is only $27. And at the end of the year, it is going to be increasing. So if you are interested in giving yourself a nice little gift, since you have cared for so many others and gifted to so many others, uh, you can head to join.momsietyclub.com to check that out. All right. Well, I look forward to sharing about how the holidays are going here hearing about how you are doing at reach out on social. If you haven't make sure you subscribe and like, and share the podcast, follow along on all of the social media, uh, platforms, primarily Instagram and reach out. I love hearing from you. You are not the only one with anxiety. You are not alone no matter how alone in your worries you may feel. I'm here too. I've been there too. Reach out via email or on social media. Reach out to a friend who has a child who may be facing other challenges. Share that you have anxiety too and just know that you are not the only one. I am here to support you. And the more we normalize and talk about these feelings, the easier it gets. For more information about working with Tori or joining the Anxiety Club, head to join.momsietyclub.com. There you'll find information about Sneeze Proof Your Pelvic Floor course, as well as the Anxiety Club, where you'll get access to two monthly support groups with other moms just like you, as well as exercises and a chat about the monthly theme to help manage your anxiety. The Anxiety Club podcast is not intended to take place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK.